and welcome back to the NSE 5 journey. We're going to continue with the second part of the system settings. If you need to contact me, you can do it here via YouTube, on LinkedIn or Twitter. So where are we on the plan? Still on the second stage on the system settings. Uh, the first part of the, the system settings, we discussed the difference between VMs and virtual use cases, where you would deploy it. We had a review of the uh, basic network settings and how to factory store, backup and restore a configuration on the 40 manager. In this next couple of videos we want to look about the administrative side of things, about administrative profiles, creating admin accounts and how we would lock that down, and the different types of authentication that the 40 manager offers. So first I want to have a discussion around something called admin profiles. Uh, first we create our profiles and then assign those profiles to accounts and the profiles allow us to assign permissions, whether that's read or write permissions, to a particular account. Now the 40 manager itself comes with a few built-in system admin profiles. They are first of all the super user. The super user cannot be modified and it's the only built-in profile that can't be modified. The others can, but not necessarily needed to be. It's better to kind of create your own from scratch rather than playing around with the defaults. So with the super user, uh, all system and device permissions are enabled. So that means that if someone logs in with the super user, they'll just see all the tabs along the top, including the system settings tab, and they could modify the permissions of other users. We also have something called the standard user. So no system permissions enabled. This essentially means the system settings tab along the top is not accessible. It's, it doesn't appear there but they do have the ability to read and write all device permissions. We also have a restricted user. The same is standard, but ultimately it's read-only. Last but not least is the policy package. These profiles have read and write access to the policy tabs, so they can modify policy packages, but they only have read access to the systems and other permissions stated. What I want to do is spend a bit more time on the 40 manager and actually creating these profiles and playing with them rather than actually going through a slide deck because it would probably help reinforce the knowledge that you are required to actually pass the exam. As far as modifying the profile accounts and the profiles will be under the system settings admin profile section. Okay so here we are at the front door of the 40 manager. Let's uh, log in with my credentials. Click on the system settings and on the left hand side under the admin we're going to click on profile. We can see that there's four profiles pre-populated for us the restricted user, the standard user, super user and package user. Three out of four of these profiles can be modified the super user cannot be. If we try to modify it you'll notice at the bottom there is no way to actually confirm the settings only the return button. Whereas if we were to click on the standard user, we can make the change, press OK, and they're saved. If we want to create a new one, we can click Create New. We can give it a name, give it a description, set the type. Now for this demonstration, we're going to be using the system admin. The restricted admin will come on shortly, uh, further on on the presentation. Once the profile name description and type has been selected we can choose what permissions we'd like to give this person so let's for example assume we want full policy access for the particular person but we don't want them to make any VPN changes hit apply and you can see the test has been created the next administrative profile type is the restricted administrative profiles they're only supported in the newer 40 manager from 5.2.0 or later and it's a restricted admin type that allows you to only modify particular security profiles within a particular device. So an example would be let's say we have a 40 manager managing multiple 40 gates and one of those 40 gates the customer wanted web filtering access. They wanted to ensure that they can allow what I what uh, websites a particular person or particular device can browse to. Giving them a restricted administrative profile access to that particular device inside that particular ADOM 
will then enable them to log on to the Fortier Manager using that restricted profile and create those changes. It's um, set up the same way ultimately as the administrative profiles through the same method system settings, admin, profile and then create new. We give it a name, we give it a comment but we select the restricted uh, section instead of the system and what we'll do is we'll jump into the Forty Manager and have a look at that now. Right, here we are back in the Forty Manager and now we want to create a administrative profile with more restricted access. So we're going to click on create new. We're going to give this a name. Type. We're going to do the restricted. And we'll select what sort of restriction we want to give it. So in this case, we only want to give it the web filter profile. And we press OK. Now we've created our profiles and we know what sort of permissions we want to give an individual. Now we have to actually create that individual and create what aid on that person will live in and how that particular person is going to authenticate, whether that's through a centralized authentication method like LDAP or Radius, or whether it's going to be a lo local authentication on the database within the 40 manager. To do that, pretty straightforward, same place system settings, admin, administrators. And we're going to go in there and we're going to create a new administrator. We'd give him a name, email address, contact details, and then assign him to a particular ADOM. And then put the profile we previously created against that particular admin. If we wanted to use the centralized authentication method, like Radius, LDAP, or TACAX, then we can do that. But in order to do that, we have to first create globally that authentication method. So what we we'll do is we we'll jump into the 40 manager and we'll have a look at these settings. Back into the 40 manager, we're on the system settings page and previously we went from the system settings, admin, profile and we created the profile test. Now that profile has been created, we need to add it to an administrator who we would like to give those permissions to. So to do that, system settings, admin, administrator you can see an administrator already exists, it's the admin, it's a local account, it's got the super user profile, it's allowed to modify all packages and the status is green, shows that it's enabled and it's actually logged in. We go create new it come up with the boxes we need to fill in to actually create this user so let's give this user a name, we're going to call him Bob Description, we we'll say he's the uh, head of IT. Password type, so this goes back to whether we want a local username and password stored on the 40 manager or whether we want to uh, utilize some sort of remote authentication or centralized authentication method. If we were to select one of those centralized authentication methods, we then have to th select what server. So we may have multiple radio servers, we may have multiple TACAC servers, and we'd have to select which one to use. As you'll notice, the drop down itself is blank. The reason it's blank is because we have no TACAX configuration. We have no radius configured. And prior to actually creating this as a radius or TACAX user on the firewall, we need to go over here to the remote auth server and actually create the type of central authentication we require. For now, we're just going to actually create a local user. So again, create new. His name is Bob. He's the head of IT. He's a local username and uh, as a local account, sorry. We're going to give him a password profile. Now, these are what we've discussed already. We know what the restricted user, standard user, super user, and package user are all built in. And we have the test one that we've previously created. What you'll notice here is we don't have the ADOM. Uh, no, no option here to actually say, only a particular ADOM can head of IT Bob actually see. Maybe he's the head of IT of a particular customer. Yeah, customer A, for example, and we only want him to see the ADOM of customer A. Now, the reason that option doesn't appear is because ADOMs has not been enabled. So, to do that, system settings, dashboard, and under the system information widget, 
we can go under the <coughs> administrative domain section click enable okay it will kick us out to rearrange the GUI and as we log in you'll notice top left hand corner we would have now selected ADOMS let's create an ADOM by going to system settings and then from here going on all ADOMS let's create one let's give it a name call it test one let's say this ADOM is going to be for a 40 gate running version 5.0 it's going to be a normal ADOM and we have no devices currently into the 40 manager so let's just press OK for now and create that ADOM now that ADOM has been created let's go back to the administrators to create new and you'll notice a new option has appeared where we can give all ADOMs or we can select the ADOM that we previously created when you select it you notice that it adds multiple ADOMs as a list so we can either remove the existing ones to give them access just to test one or we can give all ADOMs so it's very very flexible what we can do here we'll fill out the contact details of Bob and trusted host this is quite important because it allows you to actually lock down where Bob can log in from hopefully the 40 manager has been provisioned behind a 40 gate so it's already in a secure environment however if that's not the case or there's uh, company security policies that ensures that every device has to be locked down then you can actually input for example a IP address or a subnet that would then suggest that only Bob can log in from this particular source IP range so you can lock down the 40 manager even further on top of the of the uh, protection it has further upstream maybe that's a 40 gate or uh, another Cisco ASA firewall whatever that may be once we're happy with the settings we'll click OK so let's just quickly fill them in here We're going to give him the test admin, admin profile that we created under the profile section. We give him access to the ADOM called test1 and we're locked down. We'll give him, let's say it's bob at gmail.com, has his contact details and obviously phone number, sorry. We'll pop in what we want. Press OK and you can see that now Bob is being created. It's currently disabled meaning he's not logged in so from here if we wanted to see if Bob was actually on and we went to, into the 40 manager and we presented with the dashboard we would go to system settings administrator and just here you better see whether Bob is logged in or is not and a quick overview of any of the information that we've set for Bob just to review what we've learned during this lesson We've discussed about creating admin profiles and what type of admin profiles you can create, whether that's system admin profiles or restricted. We talked about the differences between them, whereas system admin allows you to have access to network settings, device management and policy, whereas the restricted admin gives you a subset of security profiles within a particular 40 gate. So for example, maybe you want an admin to only have access to change the IPS or the web filtering that would be the restricted admin once we create those profiles and we're happy with the permissions that we want to give an individual we then create that individual using the admin accounts while we're creating those admin accounts we need to think about how that admin account is going to authenticate is that going to be local on the device itself or is it going to be a remote centralized device like Radius, TACAXPASS or LDAP once we've created that user and we've locked them down using the trusted host section and decided what type of authentication method we're going to use we then looked about how you would verify the admin status is that person logged in and maybe we need to contact that admin so we need to get his email address or his telephone number we discuss how you can look about doing that 
I hope this lesson has been informative. I'd like to thank you for viewing. If it has been helpful, please do like and subscribe.